during the continuation war opposing Finland and Germany to the Soviet Union, numerous Soviet aircraft models saw service above the thousands of Karelian lakes. One of these was the Shavrov Shu-2. This was a three-seat amphibian flying boat powered by a 100 horsepower Svetsov M11 engine. Introduced in 1932, it had a modest performance, but excellent autonomy. It was capable of staying in the air for 11 hours. 270 shoot twos were produced between 1932 and 1934, including 16 as air ambulances capable of carrying a stretcher. Construction restarted in 1939 and lasted until the following year, bringing the total of shoot two units built to about 700. These served in many roles, including as a trainer, transport, ambulance and fishing patrol aircraft across the Soviet Union, with the last unit remaining in service until 1964. But of the hundreds of Shavrov flying boats produced, only two served the armed forces of a country other than the Soviet Union. Through an intelligent ruse, these aircraft found themselves on the hands of the Finns during the continuation war. In August 1942, Finnish forces in Karelia captured the Soviet ground reconnaissance patrol. Through intimidation, the Finns persuaded the female radio operator on the patrol to send a message to her base. The radio operator informed the base that two Finnish officers had been captured, and asked for an aircraft to be sent to Lake Sapsayarvi to take the enemy soldiers as prisoners of war. The Soviets fell for the ruse, and the meeting was arranged. On the evening of August 28th, two Shu-2 sent by the Soviets landed on the lake as scheduled. These bore the Soviet civil designations H-217 and H-370 and operated with the 2nd Squadron of the Northern Special Aviation Group of the Civil Air Fleet, serving the 7th Army. Flying the machines were Pavel Andreev, Fyodor Matuz, Pyotr Chaikin and Pyotr Shuga. The Finnish forces were expecting them, and attacked the Soviet crews as soon as the aircraft arrived. After a brief exchange of fire, the Finns had complete control of the situation. According to Finnish sources, both pilots were killed, while one of the mechanics committed suicide. The other mechanic disappeared, presumably having managed to escape. Russian sources, on the other hand, state that all crew members were killed in the firefight. One of the flying boats was damaged during the fire exchange and had to be repaired before being sent to Lentolai Wekusi Toista, or Squadron No. 16, based on Lake Onega. Sergeant Eero Pakarinen, an experienced seaplane pilot, was sent to convoy the two aircraft, and the Finnish markings were affixed as soon as they arrived. On September 11, the two aircraft were transferred to the Finnish Air Force Depot in Tampere by Pakarinen and Warren Officer C.P. Latala. However, due to a mechanical problem, the two flying boats only arrived the next day. In Tampere, they were given their military registrations. H-217 became AV-186 and H-370 became AV-187. However, for some unknown reason, the aircraft were not painted with their registration numbers. AV-186 was tested by Captain Per Erik Sovelius and Lieutenant Esko Halme on September the 17th. On October 1st, Captain Pekka Kokko took the machine to a detachment of the temporary depot in Korevesi, from where further tests were planned. Upon arrival, the aircraft was tested by Warren Officer Eino Yurikas. Two days later, Lieutenant Börja Laksonen and Captain Engineer Erki Vegelius decided to go for a ride over a farm near Lake Kolhin Selka. Arriving at their destination, Laksonen tried to alight on the water. However, he failed to notice that the aircraft's wheels were down, and the plane flipped over after a few feet over the water. The two aviators managed to get out of the machine and were picked up by a ship, but AV-186 was destroyed. Meanwhile, AV-187 was transferred to another depot on September 28th. There it was tested by Captain Uno Mekela and Lieutenant Erki Itagwari, who found it to be in poor condition. When winter came, the machine was stored in Ontola. It didn't fly again until May 1943, 
and then it was sent to the Sortavala seaplane base. On June 20th, it was sent back to Ontola, but had to make a forced landing on Lake Puhaselka due to mechanical problems. The aircraft was repaired, but on June 30th, its landing gear broke down while landing at Ontola, and the machine ended up on its belly. After being repaired again, the aircraft was handed over to the headquarters of a unit specializing in guerrilla warfare. However, the poor condition of the machine still caused many problems, and Captain Mekela had to make another ditching on Lake Puhaselka the same day the aircraft was delivered to the unit due to another engine failure. The Shu-2 was used thereafter mainly as a liaison aircraft. It was mostly flown by Lieutenant Colonel Yusi Sovio, who was responsible for the implementation of guerrilla operations. At the beginning of September 1944, the aircraft was in Risala. On the 13th of that month, the machine made its last flight as it was sent to Mikkeli for storage. The story of the Finnish Chevrolet Shu-2s ended the following year, when the remaining aircraft was scrapped. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos.